So today we're gonna to be breeding some guppies. Now, I'm about to head off for a month. I'm going overseas on a holiday, which is gonna be nice. But here in the fish room, we breed a ton of fish. You know, we breed rainbow fish, catfish, all sorts of stuff. All of these fish require a ton of attention. Now, because I'm going away for a month, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to see if we can breed some fish while I'm gone, like passively breed some fish. Now, I've got one of my staff members helping me out and coming and feeding the fish room while I'm gone and tending to my shop. But as for breeding, we're not really gonna be doing much. So I took the opportunity to buy some really cool strains of guppies. And in today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to breed guppies. And we're gonna see over 30 days, how many guppies are gonna be born. Guppies are one of the easiest fish to breed. They're the first fish I ever bred. They're the reason I'm in the hobby. They're a great beginner fish. Now, I really like line breeding guppies. I do have mutt tanks of guppies with all different colors and stuff like that. And that's kind of what I'd recommend as a beginner. But we have some really cool lines of guppies here today. So we'll start off over here. Up here, these are a platinum koi guppy. I really like them to be honest. The koi guppies are very, very popular. So it'd be cool to breed these, but these are the first strain we've got. Next door, we've got an amazing strain of guppy. These are the 24K gold guppies. These have become so popular in the last few years, so it'll be great to breed some of these. Lots of males, lots of females. This tank has the most guppies in it, so I'm expecting this tank to produce the most babies when I get back. Next door, we've got these albino koi's. These I know are gonna be super popular. In here, we've got like the long thread fin ones, and we also have just the short fin ones. I've had so many customers asking me for these. There's, I think like five pairs of them. So I'm expecting like a, a moderate amount of guppies to come out of this, but who knows? Here, we've only got two pairs of these. These are the metal snakeskin gold lace guppies. Only two pairs. So it's gonna be interesting to see how many babies come out of these. Down here, we've got a really cool strain of guppy. These are the uh, unicorn guppies. So I haven't really heard of these before. Um, my friend Nat dropped off all these guppies and these are one of his favorite strains. So I saw these at his fish room and um, yeah, I couldn't resist getting these. So I've got four males and two females and uh, that's not really a desired ratio, but we're just gonna see how they go. And then finally, we've got these Tiger King Cobras. So these are another really cool one. Um, these are caught the eye of like uh, a lot of people who've walked past them. There's probably 10 pairs in here, so we'll see how they go. Those are all the guppies we're gonna try and breed and we're gonna see what happens. Now for breeding guppies, you don't need a special tank, you don't need anything. You can see the tanks I've got today, they're just two foot tanks, so they're 80 litres or 20 gallons. We've only got a sponge filter and some plants. So each tank has like a plant in it. This one's got Bulbatus, other ones have Java Fern, Anubius. The thing is, guppies are live bearers and they give birth every 22 days. And they give birth to live young. So a lot of fish lay eggs and we have to hatch them out. These guys do all the hard work for us and they just drop the babies. So what happens is a lot of the time, the female will try and find a place to give birth. And if there's no hiding spaces for the babies to go when they're born, the other guppies in the tank just come around and eat them straight away. So you won't actually get any successful breeding if this happens. To create a hiding space, we could use guppy grass, we could use live plants, things like that. I'm simply just gonna use spawning mops. So. Right here, this is just a yarn spawning mop. This is just to show you how simple it is to breed guppies. It's basically just yarn wound up into a ball. You can see here we use it to breed like Bosmani rainbows and the rainbows go in there and lay their eggs. But today, we're gonna to be using it to hide the fry. We're just gonna put these in every tank. The females will be able to go in underneath here and give birth and the babies will be able to hide in here and avoid being eaten by the other guppies. This is all you need to hide the guppies. So we'll also do this for the other tanks. So we'll add the spawning mops in here. We'll add this one up here. And we'll add this to the top as well in case she wants to give birth at the surface of the water. Just grab a bit of thread and stick it underneath the lid. All right, so we've just set these tanks up now. They're all ready to go. And uh, you can see the guppies have kind of livened up a little bit now that there's a little bit of hiding spaces for them. So another thing we're gonna do is because I want these tanks to be super low maintenance, when these guppies eat food, they might not eat all of the little pieces and some of the pieces might hit the floor. They also will be pooping a lot while I'm away and all these tanks will get automatic water changes, so that's okay. But just to help with the breakdown of the waste in this tank, we're gonna to need to add a bottom feeder. So. What I've done is collected out some of these. So these are little baby mystery snails. They get big, so they're easier to spot in a tank. 
and when they breed, they lay their eggs outside of the water. So that means that they don't go absolutely crazy and overpopulate your tank the same way other snails do because you can see the eggs, so you can just take the eggs off the tank whenever you want to stop breeding them. They're so small. I want to see how big they get over the next month because there's only going to be one in the tank, so I'm guessing they're going to, I'm going to come back and they're going to be huge. But we'll add one of those little guys in and he'll be the cleanup crew. One here. Hey, leave him alone. This is when a food like this comes in really useful. So this is Bug Buffet. This is my new brand of fish food. And I don't want to like toot my own horn, but this food is really, really good for things like this because the whole food, basically the only protein sources that are in it are insect meal and shrimp meal. So it's a perfect diet for these guppies. I just find, you know, foods with fish meal and stuff like that. When would a guppy like this eat fish meal? I mean, they're so small, they can only eat insects. So it doesn't really make sense. We can throw a pellet in like this and the fish will go down to the bottom and eat it. But if you have top dwelling fish, you can simply just crush the pellet up and you can put it at the surface of the water and the fish can eat from there. That's why something like this is so good. It's high protein for the babies so they can grow quick and it's also small so they can actually eat it. So we'll feed all of our guppies and this is what they'll get twice a day over the next month and they'll just go nuts for it. And the other food they're gonna get is live baby brine shrimp. I hatch this out every day and it's just a little tiny sea monkey that they'll eat. These guys do enjoy a really high protein diet, so. Okay, well, that's kind of it for now. The tanks are all set and I'll see you guys in a month when I'm refreshed with a tan and we'll see how many guppies we have. Alrighty, so it's now been a month since we set up our guppy tanks. I'm back from my holiday and I'm surprised by how some of the guppies did. So we definitely had breeding in all of the guppy tanks. I think there's babies in every single tank except for one. If you come over and have a look here in the platinum koi guppy tank, there's a few larger babies in here. So they must have bred straight away after I left. But something that we struggled with with our guppies was a lack of hiding spaces. So I actually think I went ahead and added even more mops to these tanks after. And some of these guppies are so good at eating their babies. So I kind of did this video just to show you guys how easy it is to actually breed the guppies but they would have had way more babies if the babies had somewhere to hide because obviously the parents have eaten a lot of them. We have also been selling guppies out of these tanks. So we wouldn't have sold babies, but some of the parents might've been pulled out, which might've affected it. But there's a few little babies in here. Up here, the full gold guppies, they're really good at eating their babies. If you look in the mop here, you can see there are some freshly born babies swimming around down here as well. You can see a few little babies there. They've definitely been breeding the lights out, but just some of those big females, when they're really hungry, are so good at getting in there and finding something to eat. So I've noticed that since I've bumped up their feeding, since I've gotten back, they've not really been eating their babies as much, but still cool to see a few little guys swimming around in there. Up here in our albino koi tank, we have no babies. These are notorious for eating their fry. Like all the expert guppy breeders I've heard from say albinos are a terrible fry eating fish. They've definitely bred. I've seen the females get big and small and big and small, but we do have a lot of success here in the metal snakeskin gold lace tank. Up the top here, all these little babies, they must be about five to six days old. And I've just been feeding them bug buffet. They've been doing really well. And then there's also some like medium sized ones. So there's two batches of babies in here. So it seems that these fish aren't as bad at eating their babies, but something worth noting is I only had four fish in here, so that might have made a difference too. Less predators, so more opportunity for babies to survive. So there must be like 50 babies in there, which is pretty awesome after 30 days. We'll go to the unicorn guppy tank. I'm so happy about this. There are some babies in here. Uh, there's only about one, two, three, four, five. There's probably about seven in here. I did end up losing a few of the females and I'm not too sure why, but they at least dropped a few babies and it means that we're gonna continue on the bloodline. Not a huge amount, but still success nonetheless. And finally, we'll come over to the Tiger Kings. I sold a ton of these and I'm not too sure whether there's babies in here. I've looked a few times, I haven't been able to see any. So I think as well, they've been eating their babies too. 
So I kind of underestimated how much hiding spaces I would need for some of these fish. Yeah, I can't see any babies in there, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of a better job trying to get fry out of there. But like I said, we did have success in a few tanks, so it shows you how easy guppies are to breed. They're not a challenging fish at all, and they're an excellent beginner fish if you can get really good breeders that are local bred. But in future, like I'm definitely gonna do this project again. I'm gonna set up a bunch of guppies and try and breed them. I'm gonna add a ton of floating plants. I'm gonna add tons of hiding spaces. I don't think you can have enough hiding spaces. The more hiding spaces you have, the more babies you'll get. But just shows you how easy it is to breed guppies, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And yeah, it was kind of a cool project to do. So I'll see you in the next one.